Hello, welcome to True Hoop with me, Gerard Hector, and Coach David Thorpe. How are you, sir? I am great. How are you? Good. Uh, we're past July 4th. We're summer's feeling good. You know, for you, summer, this is all the same weather for you down in Florida all year round. But nice no, and no, no, it's way worse. It's <laughs> way it worse. Is, it is way worse this summer. Yeah, it's super hot and humid. Although I will tell you, uh, I mean, you know, p- people are really struggling. Mm, uh, yeah. This is just my wife. We had a friend in town. Uh, lovely woman in shape, le- younger than us, from D.C. area, couldn't mm-hmm. handle the heat. Like They went walking on the beach, and she couldn't handle it. And we're like, what? This is nothing. <laughs> it, it's not like D.C. doesn't get hot. No, it gets very hot and humid in D.C. Yeah, but, but just, this is, yeah, June until... is a different thing. June, June until mid-October, yeah, we're in it. Like, my pool right now, I just looked it up when I was in my house earlier, 87.6 degrees now. Yeah. I and mean, we have a bird cage and lots of trees, 87.6. <laughs> I mean, my parents are in South Florida, as you know. And if I, when I go visit them during this time of the year, I like to run early up here. I got to run real early if I go down yeah. there because anything. Super humid. Oh, my God. You're, yeah. you're dying. You're dripping sweat. You come out of the shower and you're, you're yeah. sweating. It's crazy. I had, a, I had a coach uh, who's from California call me yesterday. He's working with one of my players because I, I can't be everywhere. Right. So I have to hire people sometimes mm-hmm. or the players hire people and I kind of oversee it. And so he's working with a player, and the, they went to the gym in the morning, and the, a breaker had, had gone off, and they oh, had no, no AC. AC. And they went like at 8.30 in the morning, and he said, two long rebounds where I chased down, and I'm already drenched with sweat. Yeah. I, I mean, said, you, you just described my entire life until, my, I, I, until I was, the 90s. I was just going to say, as a native of South Florida and how you grew up, you probably spent many a day in a disgustingly hot gym. We didn't have air conditioning in my high school gym. As a player, nor as a coach. When I coached, our gym was not air-conditioned. Brutal. And uh, I stopped coaching a 92 high school team. So I think it's air-conditioned now. But, yeah, I just – it was just normal. It was a sweat box. It's just how it was, man. I loved it. I David, loved it. Also, not only hot, but stinky as all hell. When you're in the yeah. multiple hours, it's not, not great. I, I, uh, <laughs> I, I will tell you, Gerard, there are two places where I really feel at home. One is in a pool. Yeah. I just connect to my youth. Yep. I was swimming at two years old. Mm-hmm. And the other is an old an old gym. court. I, I love all gyms. I, I, used to, I used to keep track. I don't. It's in the hundreds, how many, how many gyms I've been in, including yeah. like five new ones this year. My last new one was um, Saturday, Saturday oh, morning. I worked yeah. out really nice place in downtown Orlando. Really nice. Um, surprisingly nice because it was in a rec center, but it was great. But yeah, I'm just, I sweep the floor or I'll walk. I always walk the court. Yeah, looking for gum or whatever that yeah. could cause a problem mm-hmm, for one of my mm-hmm. athletes. It's just a habit I have. I'm just at home there, man. I yeah. don't care. I, and, <laughs> and some of these gyms are freezing with the AC. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm just used to hot. Yeah, whatever. I'm a, I'm a Florida boy. What am I gonna do? <laughs> well, the gym gyms that are not so hot, that are much more air conditioned and doing well, are the summer league gyms. Obviously, the ones in Vegas, but the ones right now for California Classic. And uh, a very talked about young player, David Thorpe, uh, Ronnie James mm-hmm. played his first uh, California Summer League game. Four points, two rebounds, two assists, and a steal, I believe, in 22 minutes. Um, the stat line less important than he saw action uh, in a game that was not uh, college or high school. Um, and, you know, at, here at True Hoop, you guys know, David has been uh, high on Bronny in terms of he thinks he's got talent, um, obviously, <laughs> being raised by LeBron he's got a very good basketball IQ um that you know it's kind of a cheat code right in many ways like your dad's got the answers to the test it's like yeah here they go so here's here's the book <laughs> you know like it's super thick good luck um but we here true we know that everybody's gonna be talking about Bronny I, I said on our call this morning literally the, the guy sneezes and everybody wants to freaking talk about it um what we're so fortunate here is that we have David and his critical eye and David said something very interesting to us this morning on our call, which is we are going to do a sober look uh, at Bronny over the course of however long he's around. Um, and it's going to be measured. And, you know, we're just not going to get it all crazy and microscopic because this kid's 19, year, 18 years old. He's a rookie. I mean, he don't know shit about shit, right? Like, it's going to take some time. And I love that, David. So uh, we have an article coming out about Bronny mm, sometime this week, possibly today, maybe tomorrow. Uh, but I want David to kind of give a little overview of what he is talking about when he talks about Bronny and player development, particularly for someone like Bronny. Yeah, first of all, your comment about, you know, being LeBron's son. Uh, one of my favorite memories that I did not experience firsthand 
was uh, one of my son's assistant coaches calling me after day one of summer practice. I was not there. And um, and may have have been day two or three, because I I remember I was there for day one. So maybe sometime in the first week, I wasn't there. And uh, the varsity coach, who was not a very good coach, but he'd been around basketball a long, long time, played college ball. Um, It was uh, his varsity team returning, everyone from the year before, four mid to high major Mm -hmm. players on the team. Uh, and my five foot eight, you know, 15 year old son out there. And, uh, and then after the varsity was over, he practiced with the varsity. Then the JV guys came out and the head coach was there for both. And he made a comment to the other assistants. He's like, like, I can't believe Max Thorpe is a freshman. And I think it was because the other kids were just slapdick, you know, just fucking <laughs> throwing the ball around, goofing right. off. And, you know, my son had been, this is my son. Mm-hmm. So imagine being LeBron James' son. <laughs> and he's also five years older than my son was. Mm-hmm. It's another world. He he has, like Steph Curry in a sense, uh, only heightened. Uh, he's so famous already. Uh, he's he, Henry made a comment on a call today about I mean, how many times has his dad come home talking about the game? Every day. <laughs> right. And just how much you can learn from, from, from vicariously a little mm-hmm. bit. Um, but I just was reading an article today uh, from Le, about Le, Le, LeBronny. Uh, quoting LeBron, where he said, you know, a year ago, he's coming out of heart surgery. And boy, that was a good reminder. That was, I, I read this after our call this morning, mm-hmm. when I said, let's just slow down. Time out. Like, all of this has been conjecture, whatever. He's in the league now. Starting in summer league, let's slow down and give this young man a chance to assimilate. Uh, you have to make every mistake. And you typically make mistakes more than once. You just hope in time... Your problem solving, it gets better and better with fewer and fewer errors, uh, knowing that you're never going to be perfect. Chris Paul still makes bonehead mental mistakes, and he's one of the smartest guys that's ever played the game. LeBron does too. We just need to be sober and rational, reasonable, and recognize this guy barely has played. I think his high school experience wasn't great. Mm-hmm. I know that, um, I know that uh, uh, he played against a lot of high-level players. He did. But I'll remind you, when LeBron was in high school, Every game was on ESPN. Yep. I, uh, if memory is, if memory, my memory is right. He destroyed the yes. old of the world. Sure he did. Destroyed them. But in the conference games, mm-hmm. fire. Every game was a not every game. Many games was a battle. I don't think Bronny experienced that. He they didn't have that same kind of grit. To, it was all high major, high major, high major. It doesn't always. Mm-hmm. There are better teams and better coach teams or tougher teams. I just think, and then he barely played in college, right. understandably. So we just need to slow down and not be histrionic, good or bad. He makes a great play. Let's be measured about it. He makes a terrible play. Let's be measured about it. And we just got to, right now he's in, it's like evaluating a med student as a doctor, but he's in year one of medical school. Yeah. He not do that. Right. You know? He's got to take the survey courses. He's got to figure out what he's good at and whatever. Um, there's a lot to be said. We have this article coming out maybe today, probably by tomorrow for sure. Um, where the Lakers have a lot on their plate. What are they going to do with this young man? Mm -hmm. But, uh, and he's got his own say in it. So does LeBron. Uh, I think there's some interesting controversies coming. Yeah. Is every, every second he plays in year one comes at the expense of someone better than him. Correct. The team win. This is not a bad team. He's not on Portland. He's not in Detroit. He's on the Lakers, mm-hmm. guaranteed money. So that's going to provide some interesting things as well. David, one of the things that you have with all of your players that you work with, um, depending on what their their levels are, right? When you talk about all NBA players, you're like, you aren't teaching them so much as making sure they're mindful about certain things, right? Because they know how to do, that's why they're all NBA and make a gajillion dollars. But are you mindful about X, Y, and Z? But for someone like Bronny, you think he is, and also for, for, for all NBA guys, what is our plan for your development? Do you get from box one to two, three, four, five, and so on? And we're not sure. We're, I'm not going to say they don't have a plan. We're just not sure. But that's what you're going to be concerned about, right? When you talk about Bronny going forward, what is the Lakers' plan for him? And how are they getting him from one step to the next? Right. So, so the Lakers need a plan. And then Bronny needs a plan in each game. Forget about the overall. He needs a plan for the overall development and what I do each day. So here's an example of what I mean. It's going to be in my article. I'll give you this one glimpse. Uh, 
there is a play where uh, the other team takes not a great shot. Nothing but Lakers big men are at the rim. They're going to get the rebound. There's no one else there. Bronny's 17 feet out or so, and he kind of matriculates down, which is a good habit in general. But what, if he was my student, I would show him the clip that we'll have on the article. And uh, I would say, okay, it's very obvious to me. You're big ass going to get this ball. So you need to start getting out. If you're a one, then you want to get the outlet pass down the court. If you have a point guard already on the team looking to do that, you're the fastest dude on the court race. But you, what you ended up doing is not get the rebound, which there was never a doubt that your teammate would get it. I think Castleton got it seven feet tall. And you weren't involved in transition because you were trying to get a rebound. So, Bronny, you're fast and tiny. Getting out in transition is a great way to get you and us points and good shots anyway before the defense is set. So if, if you get the long outlet, great. But if you can race the court and we get the outlet pass to a guard and hit you, great. We want to stretch the defense that way. There's a million of those of just figuring out how I can be effective. Uh, and, uh, I mean, it's game one. Right. So no one's being critical. Right. These are just learning opportunities. The point I'm making I don't think teams are really good at this, Lakers included. So LeBron needs to do that. LeBron needs to take the approach of, I'm going to forget about being his teammate for a minute, because right now he's really not, summer league. Uh, grab these clips. Let me find three or four clips. That's all you need. I sent a rookie that I saw play yesterday, like four clips today. He played four minutes. So a clip per minute. Just real basic stuff like, hey. Because that's, yeah. When they're young, it's not always about mindfulness. Sometimes you're really teaching them something. Mm -hmm. The more veteran player right. is more of, hey, remember this. And it's helpful because they can, there's so many data points in their head. There's so many reference points in their head. If you can narrow their focus, I think it really helps. Um, I don't know what baseball hitters do, deal with uh, when, they're, when they're in the plate. And a guy can throw 100, but he also can throw a hook and a changeup. My guess is they're trying to keep their thoughts as simple as possible mm -hmm. so they can just trust and react. Um, it's what you have to do here is get them mindful, lock in on a couple things. If you're looking for a lot of different things, you'll find none of it. But if, you're, if you know what you're looking for, you'll mm -hmm. find it. At least you'll have a better chance of finding it. That's my it, philosophy anyway. My in that example you, you mentioned, David, right, that's about awareness, processing, <laughs> right, all those things that have to happen yep. very quickly, right? Yep. Okay, three guys are back who are all bigger than me. They, they got it. Oh, we have a point guard. Great. To your point, I know I'm fast. I see that ball go up. I'm already quickly recognizing, to your point, racing right towards the corner rim, wherever. He's really is, fast. You know, th that, that's my job. But the only way you get to know how to do that is by playing, right? And playing a yeah. ton and fucking up 9 billion times, right? And that, we're not sure how that's going to work out if he's going right. to be with the, with the big club. Yeah, that's, uh, that's where the Lakers want to be good. And so it just doesn't make sense to play a, a very, very inexperienced rookie. Um, this is the give and take. They're mm -hmm. going to have to figure out. Uh, I, I wish, I don't know, I, the South Bay Lakers are fine, the G League team. I, don't, I think Kobe Carl was their coach. I haven't seen his coaching this year. I have no negative things to say. I think some of the, the Ignite were bad, but the other teams were all fine. Most of, their, most of them have coaches that want to be great NBA coaches one day or college coaches. Um, he needs to play against those guys and fail. He won't only fail, but he'll often fail. Uh, the G League, the G League players, by and large, are very good, and they're getting better. Less and less young players are doing well. More and more veteran guys are doing well. Good mm -hmm. players who are good enough to play in the NBA just need a break. And it'd be great for him to go against those guys and earn minutes for for the big squad. That that my approach in year one is no different than Major League Baseball. You, there, you're no way you're going to make the majors your first year as a 19 year old. Dalton Connect is different. He played four years of college. You know, mm -hmm. he dominated the SEC. Right. So you can expect him to play some for the Lakers. Right. Ronnie, I don't care what your name is. You're a little guy. You're a tiny. You're one of the smallest guys in the league. And so we got to get you understanding how to play and read the game. And listen, if he ends up doing it because his his IQ is so high, then you matriculate him in slowly over the course mm -hmm. of the season. But start off. He's got to be with the NBA team now. There is no G League till November. Right. And then just let him go run a team. Yeah, that's what I would do. 
Well, to continue your, your baseball analogy, right? So you send the kid, the rookie, you draft to class A, right? Or he's playing Arizona fall ball. He yep. li- lights it up, does so well. He may skip double A and go to triple, right? Yep. Like, because Absolutely he's so right. good, right? Like, but the, you earn that, right? Over time. And, right. You, and we give them time to earn. And I hope that, again, the Lakers figure out what, what is best for him and, and LeBron aids in that process. Um, there were some, uh, it was a big trade, David. Uh, one of the big free agents left on the market, uh, switch sides. DeMar DeRozan on uh, a sign and trade went from the Chicago Bulls to the Sacramento Kings and a three year, $74 million deal. Harrison Barnes and unprotected 2031 pick swap, uh, goes to the Spurs and Chris Duarte and two second round draft picks and cash go to the Chicago Bulls. So immediately, immediate thought here. What do you think about the the just off the surface for the Sacramento Kings? What do you think like about that trade? What do you think about the trade? I don't know if you like it or not. I didn't love it, other than if they thought that uh, DeRozan could end up getting him something better at the trade deadline um, than Harrison would. Mm-hmm. Uh, their offense is pretty good. Their, it was great a year ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, this last season, not as good. Good though. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much more he solves of, the, of their fraud, offensive problems. I think he can, he'll make them a little better. He's, if he stays where he is, which is truly a work of art. Elite. He's, yeah, he's really a truly amazing player. Um, defensively, though, it's, that's their challenge. And I, I, I think we've seen in a few different spots, teams are able to go get a player that isn't the perfect fit, but he's an asset that they can use later. Mm-hmm. We, we said with Hartenstein last week regarding OKC. I think this is a case of that. Hey, we can go get this guy. And what we'll get for him later is even better if he plays well for us. Mm-hmm. Then, uh, like, I, like, if I was DeRozan, I wouldn't be buying in Sacramento. I'd rent. <laughs> yeah. I'd rent month to month. Yeah. I wouldn't lease for a year. Yeah. Um, he could afford whatever. He made a lot of money. But I think it's fine. I think it's more interesting what San Antonio is doing. Yeah. Getting some just, you know, decent guys mm-hmm. to play around Wemby. Yeah. I, I, a lot of people don't think you should do that. They do have a lot of young players, but now they have Chris Paul and Harrison Barnes. Mm-hmm. You know, 10 years ago, you could have had those guys, you know? <laughs> um, but they'll be better. And I think they're just trying to show Wemby, hey, we're, just, we're, just, we're trying to play more important games for you. Mm-hmm. Learn from experienced guys, small forward, point guard, and um, as we still develop our young guys. Yeah, quick on the San Antonio point. Um, you're bringing in more, not that, who was in there before were not professional guys. But if, if someone says to me, pros in my head, Chris Paul and Harrison Barnes come to mind, right? It's guys who just, they're, they're pros, man. Like they know how to do things the right way. Um, I always joke about players who can make competent entry passes. I know those two can do that, right? Just basic things that, th- that they know how to do, very good at, right? And again, just creating more of an environment around Wemby that is weird players who have won a lot of games over the course of our NBA career. Right, and that's the kind of environment I'm, I know Wemby wants. He, he wants to win. That kid's a winner, so I think that's going to be helpful. And then we'll see what happens to them. Right, they can screw around, as I said before, end up in the play-in for sure, and that could be a nice little story for them. Just a little Wemby getting a little if, taste early. Yeah, Wemby has to make another leap, which mm-hmm. he's making. He was making at the end of last year. Devin Vassell needs to continue mm-hmm. to make strides. He is a long way still to go for his potential. Um, Jeremy so- Sochan has to, uh, I think, find another level. He's He's been a bit of a disappointment, but he's very young. Um, they've got I, – I was talking to an agent this morning. There, there's more trades potentially coming. Oh, for sure. Uh, uh, um, potentially with you know, Malachi Branham and they have Trey Jones and Blake Wesley. These are first-round picks um, that uh, – in the case of Branham and Wesley, uh, Kelvin Johnson off the bench. Mm-hmm. I like him. Um, yeah, they, but they've got some potential more moves to make. To I think make a run in for the play in, yeah. which would be good for Wemby in year two for sure. One of the things that you always said, David, is that you don't love veteran guys who play the same position teaching right. younger guys uh, about the game. And so obviously, but for Wemby, I think he's okay because none of those guys play his position, nope. right? Um, Vassell and 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 Johan, well, maybe you got some issue there, right? With with, with no, Chris I and- think. I think Harrison's going to play a three. Okay. Jeremy is probably more of a four. Okay. And so I think starting five is Chris Paul, Devin, uh, Jeremy at the four, Harrison at the three. That's my guess okay. with Wemby at the five. That's, that's fine. And those guys, Sochan and Vassell, who you say need to make a leap, what can they, if you were advising them to, hey, pay attention when Chris does this or pay attention when Harrison does this, what would you say to them about just learning from older guys in the league and more experienced guys? I mean, in Devin's case, uh, he, he's starting to act like an assertive scorer. 
And so I think it's less of that and more of, Chris, we need you to get Devin even better shots, which I think he'll be good. Everyone's going to talk about um, Chris Paul with Wemby. Uh, you can look it up. Devin Vassell is not old. Mm. I want to say he's 23. Probably. Like maybe just turned 23. He's young. He, got, he, could, he could be a senior in college now. 23, yep. Yeah. So um, that dude has a ton of t- a two-way potential. So um, it's really more of don't just ball watch with Wemby and Chris. You're a big, big part of what we do. We need you to be a fulcrum offensively, be a sort of scorer. And, um, you know, also, uh, I don't know how much gravity Chris Paul has anymore, but Devin's a, a rangy guard, not so tall, but rangy at 6'5", but long and, and um, awkward a little bit the way he plays in a good way. Set more inverted screens for Chris. Let him read. Wemby's got gravity also. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's some things they can – I think there's some fun things they can do. I don't know if they will. There's a lot of people talking – in the league about the Spurs just aren't what they used to be. Uh, we, we'll have to see. Yeah. I certainly can't complain about Wemby's progress last year. No. Or, or, or Devin's for that matter. Uh, this is a big year for them. And, um, and so they brought in the point guard who I think is close with Pop and uh, is going to have some say in how things go. And, uh, and Harrison, I, I've always been a huge. Yeah. I, I, when he was in college, maybe, I don't in remember Carolina, if he was college yeah. or a rookie. I wrote that um, I was at ESPN then. That's how long I was. I wrote that uh, he'll be playing for Team USA one day. And he, he has. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's had quite the career we hoped he would have. No. It's tough when you're traded yep. you know, from a dynasty. But um, still very good. Yes. He's been good for a long time. Made a ton of yeah, money in this league. <laughs> I think, I think they're, a, they're a playing candidate, which is all you need for Wemby in year two. Yeah, no, it, it should be good. Good things could be happening out in San Antonio. And you mentioned Sohan, Sohan, he's only 21. I mean, so you yeah. got young players here They're who young. really, you know, do some things. I'm going to go back to Sacramento. So now basically DeRozan takes the Harrison Barnes role at the four now, right? Um, but David, do you worry about them on the floor? If we talk about San Antonio, Sacramento, they were a team that did not, I don't know if they didn't handle success well, but they were a two seed two years ago. And then last year, didn't quite work out for them, right? For a variety of reasons. Injuries. Were they a two or a three? Maybe I got three. Three, three versus six. Yeah, yeah three. versus maybe the three. Warriors. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, yeah. Same thing. They're, you know, they're injuries, teams. whatever. Very, they just didn't come back with the same level, right? As they did. And that happens in the NBA all the time. Um, yep. On the floor, though, you bring on DeRozan. You already have a five who doesn't space the floor in, in, in Sabonis. DeRozan doesn't shoot threes, really, at the four, right? So are you worried about them a little bit in terms of how they look and how they want to play? Mike Brown likes to play more of that spaced out everybody kind of firing up threes letting box get downhill i mean if you're four and you're five aren't shooting threes uh you're just running a, a warriors type offense then but i don't think they have the shooters at one two three to do that um yeah like i said i always feel like they got them because they could and now they can maneuver i think in whatever number of months before you can train them again yeah i wouldn't be surprised to see him you know go to a, a team where he's a better fit yeah for sure uh, in a move that I, I, I guess I was surprised. I just wasn't sure what the market was from or where he would end up. Miles Bridges ends up back in Charlotte on three years, $75 million deal. Now, before all the stuff happened with the um, domestic violence case, I mean, Bridges was playing. I mean, I think he actually made, he made an all-star team, if I'm not mistaken. He's playing very good basketball. So we know he's a talented player. Um, if he has gotten his mind right and gotten himself into the right counseling and help that he needs for whatever um, was going on with him then. This is probably good for Charlotte, but our issue there is we don't really trust them as an organization. But they hired, they hired a, a young guy in Charles Lee, at head coach, who we think is, could be very good one day. Yeah, it's a new staff. Yeah, I, I, new ownership. Mm-hmm. So new everything. New everything. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that uh, you got to retain an asset uh, from a business standpoint. And uh, they drafted Saloon, who's mm-hmm. a power forward. So now he can come off the bench. That's good. Um, they, they've got some young talent. I, I'm a huge Brandon. I'm a bigger Brandon Miller fan than I am a Lonzo Ball fan. Um, both guys are super, super talented. Bridges at the four. I'm a big Mark Williams fan at the mm-hmm. five. Um, yeah, they've got, you know, the beginnings of something. And we'll see if, you know, I, I'm rooting for Charles Lee. Mm-hmm. He's coaching Summer League. Yep. I think it's great. Um, got a championship now with the Celtics. I've heard great things about him. Uh, yeah, Bridges is, I looked it up. He had a bad year last year. 
Understandably right, so. Right, coming off year of that. Year before, very, very good. Mm-hmm. His last year, very good. Uh, uh, let's hope he gets to that, and and hopefully uh, Lamelo stays healthy. That's the and big thing. Make some progress as a player, mm-hmm. and they and now they they're cooking with grease, as you like to say. Yeah, well, you I mean all the players you mentioned that's that's talent right there. If those guys just begin to start scratching their talent and play and are healthy, yeah. they're better than what they've been the past two years, right? Like I mean, just off that Brent, alone, Brandon Miller is super talented, yep. six nine or so, shooter, basketball player. Uh, was so good at Alabama, mm-hmm. make Very good. winning plays. For, uh, player games. of the year in the SEC as a freshman. Like, that's, yeah. You know. Yeah, right. Uh, really, went number two. First, Ameri- first non-European guy taken in that draft, number two. Yeah, and lo- we know how, how talented LaMelo is. Um, you got to care about winning. You got to care about winning. You got to care about grinding out. Uh, I would think LaMelo's got something to prove. I, I saw so. something about he got sued. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. Driving his that. car real fast. Yeah. Like, at some point, you got to grow up. Yes. And now's the time. Mm-hmm. You, you've been, you, you've not earned your money. You've, you've made a lot of money on the come, but now you got to earn it. This, this was everybody. I had a, a player I was, I was helping, a max player. The last thing he wants to do is not be worth his money. He, 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 some guys don't care. Like, hey, I earned my money. This guy was like, I'd never want to be a guy that looks like he's stealing money. LaMelo, and that's how I think most players are, by the way. Yep. Now it's time to, all right, put up, buddy. You, you know, again, you got to be healthy. But what are you doing to be healthy? This is something I've talked a lot to agents about. The players that are really buying into nutrition, mm-hmm. diet, nutrition, proper year-round exercise, rest. strength training, mm-hmm. physio, rest, all of it to, to reduce, this, reduce the likelihood of injury. You can't ever eliminate it, obviously. Um, I don't have any idea what Lamelo is doing at all. But he needs to be doing all those, everything possible. I agree. Brandon Miller does too. Mark Williams, who did not play a ton last year because of injury. But he's really talented. Nick Richards backs him up. It's a nice double-headed center, potentially. Both a shot blocker, too, which is nice. Yeah, they've got the makings of – and then if Saloon – I've heard – I've never seen Saloon play. One guy I trust uh, who travels the world said he's really talented. So, all right. Now they got two talented for us. Right. One's Let's Miles see. and the other's a rookie. Yeah. they got everything they need. You just got to develop now. And to your point about Lamelo, he he already signed that rookie max extension, five years, two hundred yep. and whatever. So to yep. to David's point, it's okay. Time now. He's got to put up. Right. Um, David, if you were Charles Lee, you came from an organization like Boston. Obviously, you're fresh off a championship. You were there for a couple of years. A winning culture and mentality. Obviously, it's going to be very different when you, when, when you arrived in Charlotte, just because that's just how it is. You can't change everything overnight. If it were you, what's the first thing you would do to try to instill the idea of a winning culture in charlotte oh i probably would work on accountability defensively and starting from leadership coaches management and lead and players on the court um management's got to hold coaches accountable coaches have to and players play, coaches have to hold players accountable starting with defense and then your best players Lamelo included have to hold each other accountable defensively like it has to, to me now you you don't have to do that they they could do what denver did and say, let's just be the world's best offense. Well, then you got to hold each other accountable for that. Mike and Tony would have done that you know, back in the day with his teams. Um, but you got to be great at something. And so uh, uh, if we can't be great, uh, what do they say? Uh, perfect is the enemy of good. Mm-hmm. Let's at least make progress. Let, and that starts with holding guys accountable. That is not easy to do necessarily. No. I was talking to a player playing for a national team who, who has NBA players on. It wasn't Team USA who said the head coach who's NBA connected isn't necessarily holding his guys as accountable. And I understand it. It's a national team. I have no idea where this coach is from. don't know if he's of the same nationality as the players. But uh, this is something I do with a lot of national p- teams and players. It's not always the easiest thing. Um, it helps when you are from that same country. Uh, but the same thing in the NBA. you got to hold guys accountable. You do that to me with playing time, but also first with direct intervention, coaching them up. you got to coach them up. And um, if Charlotte can be, you know, top 18 on defense, wow, they that's... almost can't help but be top 18 on offense with yeah. the talent they have. You're right. And now they're making progress. They're not, you know, they, the closest they've been, they've been in two play-ins. And I think they've won one play-in game, uh, but got blown out mm-hmm. in the other play-in both times. Blown out, not competitive. So, but, so that's really, to go backwards even more, it starts with that. We, my, I would tell them our training camp 
uh, it's going to be the most competitive training camp you've ever been in. Like we have to set a tone in day one of just being ultra competitive. Uh, guys talk shit to each other. Like when we leave training camp, let's bond back together. But mm-hmm. in camp, it's a fucking war. No one's guaranteed playing time. I don't care what salaries are. Um, we, we're charting everything. We have the tape on everything. The best 10 guys will start and play the most minutes in our first few preseason games. We'll go from there. That's what I would do. I like it. All right, guys, we'll be back after a brief commercial break. All right, David, it's summertime and it's an Olympic year. So what does that mean? Team USA basketball. They arrived in Vegas, uh, Team USA, over the weekend, uh, led, of course, by head coach Steve Kerr. Eric Spolsch is also on that staff. I don't remember what other coaches are on the staff, but those two for sure um, I know. And obviously, there's all these interviews and stuff happening. Uh, KD sat down with Vince Goodwill. Steph sat, sat down with Vince Goodwill. Steph and Steve sat down with Malik Andrews on ESPN. So, you know, it's all the things. And I sent the video around in our chat this morning of the guys spitting the basketball their finger. And I asked David on the call this morning, who on Team USA can't? If you had to guess, spit the basketball there because and David didn't know. Um, but I thought it was funny because it was Halliburton. And when the guys all asked, they're like, yeah, Gen Z just makes sense. What do those kids know how to do anyway? Which is hilarious because not like the old guys are old, old. You guys are 38. Like, you're not like 60. <laughs> when it's it's also not like Tyrese doesn't have skill. Well, correct. And then uh, uh, Joel and B was the other one who couldn't spin the ball this bigger. And they cut to Katie and he's like, Joel? He's like, I thought he was more coordinated than that. That's disgusting. And it's just like, I, I love when those guys all get together. It's just funny, good content of everyone just, you know, you get to see the best players in the world all gather, or not all of them, but most of them gather together and have a good time uh, playing with each other. Um, and Katie actually said something interesting, David. He was like, you know, during the year, you hate these dudes because you're competing against them, whatever. And it's nice over this course because we're all fighting for the same thing. So I was like, oh, we're friends for, for a month, right? Like every, everything's all good. I thought that was nice. Uh, Steph? Spoke to Malik Andrews, as I said, and he talked about, obviously, the big news, which is the core has broken up finally. Clay Thompson is on his way to Dallas. Um, and Steph made comments about, look, he thinks his team will be the last dynasty the NBA sees because it's hard to keep all these great players together um, with, with the way the league is right now. And I know, David, you have some thoughts on that. Um, look, the Warriors were benefited by a lot of things that helped them, right? Number one, those three guys were all drafted homegrown, right? That always helps you. Two. Steph had early injury concerns um, in his career, and that stopped him from getting a rookie max extension uh, when he was eligible for one. That paved that coupled with the spike in this in the salary cap helped pave the way for KD to come in and a whole bunch of other stuff. But those three core guys have been there, um, and Steph is still committed to winning. But he said his team will be the last team he thinks to be a dynasty. What do you say, David? I mean, yeah, he's not Nostradamus. He's an incredibly gifted basketball player. Uh, there will be some some organization that figures some stuff out, gets lucky, whether it's the Spurs with the world's best player potentially mm-hmm. in Wemby, the Thunder, uh, Minnesota, if Anthony mm-hmm. Edwards you know takes another jump forward. Um, there is there is a tough middle class in the NBA now, and so you got to develop your young guys um, and get them to be as good as possible as quickly as possible. That's really the key: is fast, get them fast. And uh, they come up with a coach that's got puts a great system like Kerr did. You know, they also turned a second round pick into a Hall of Famer in Draymond. They turned a, a very lackluster first two years of Clay Thompson, who played four years of college and was below average in the NBA for two and a half, three years into an All Star and Hall of Famer. Uh, that isn't that isn't nothing. You gotta you gotta do player development. You have to also build a system that lets those guys shine. Someone else will do it. Yeah, I don't know when. But, you know, the first thing will be look at the Spurs because of Wemby. Yeah. You have that player helps a lot. Yeah. But there's also not a lot of dynasties to begin with. No. You know, and you know how you define it, it's not right. easy. But if we're talking about multiple titles mm-hmm. in, a, in, you know, in not that many more years. Right. So what did the Spurs win? Five and 10 or 11? Five, no. five and 11. The, Warriors are what, four well, and nine or something like that? Yeah. The Warriors are four and nine, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, this per- the Celtics are going to be really good this year. They have. <laughs> really, really good. Now, the, the tough part about the Celtics is, right, is that people are going to be like, they're no dynasty because they haven't no one won one. But I'm like, guys, look at when since Jason Tatum came into the league. What that – it's pretty much conference finals every year. Minus Almost one year they got, year. they got blown out uh, by the Nets in, in one year in, in year one. But, like, right. that's where they go. Like, that's pretty fucking good, man. Like, it's fucking hard. Well, look at- in that interview, it's hard to win right. in this league. I, we say it all the time. Look at the Clippers. They have won conference finals in history. 
with all the guys they brought in. They go back to the Blake and CP days. Mm -hmm. They've had one. So Boston's been there seven times, I think. And, and now they've got a championship. They win another one next year. That's three finals in four years and yeah. two titles. Pretty, pretty good run. And guess what? And I'm counting those seven conference. I'm sorry. Like that, getting to the conference finals is, as we know, the majority of NBA players will not make the conference finals in their career. Correct. That's just yeah. how it goes. <laughs> like, and, and Joel Embiid is arguably the best player in the world. He's certainly top three. Never been to a conference Never. Finals. And there's no guarantee he's going to one either. Like, no, no, know? but I like their team. Right. It's just, it's hard, man. Really hard to win in this league. You know, we, we wrote, not we, uh, Stephen Lardy and Henry, uh, David came up with bonus wins a few years ago. Yep. And that is such an important piece is that those players who are making low level rookie salaries, who have been developed and who are ready to contribute to winning right, right away. That, I mean, God, if you look at the teams that end up doing well and you're like, oh, they came out of nowhere. I bet you, look at bonus wins. I bet you they lead the league in bonus wins because that's how you do it. Guys who make $2 million a year, but they're contributing like a $20 million a year player. I mean, that was Hartenstein, all, basically his entire career. That, that's Isaiah Hartenstein, right? Like you have to have players like that. Yes, you need superstars. We all know that. But you need these other guys who are really ready to help you win possessions. And, you know, coaches, it's tough. We talk about it all the time, David, right? Like their job is... They kind of have to think long term, but they're so short term minded in their thing because they have to win tonight. And it's like, guys, you might lose tonight, but if we develop this guy, you might win a ton more down the road. But I mean, I have a job down the road, and it's this is the this is the push pull and the challenge about being a coach and a GM in the NBA. But those guys make millions of dollars, so I don't feel bad for them. Right. Uh, hold on now. So I know we're done pretty soon. I got two quick things for you. Yeah. Is it Hartenstein or Hartenstein? Hart might be Hartenstein. Did I say Stein? Hartenstein. Yeah, he's German. Uh, there's no H. There's no age. Hartenstein. I'm Jewish. I'm not familiar with the Stein, but he's not American. German. Hartenstein. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second thing. I don't care. I was kind of kidding about that. <laughs> but the second thing, I'm not kidding. Uh, do you remember when Danny Early, Danny Early said it was ridiculous that he was flirting with the Lakers so we can get a new deal? And I said, well, even if that's true, because he already has the extension, he could be doing it for more NIL money, which is something to do. Uh -huh. Did you see the, the breaking news? Sure did. <laughs> New six-year, $50 million deal, and who knows what else is in there? Come I mean, on, man. This, Act this, like we're stupid. We telegraphed this the day it happened. What did I say? I was like, hmm, the guy who broke the story wrote a book about your whole family, or yeah. your dad, really, but whatever. I was like, hmm, this seems kind of weird to me. And, and I'm telling you, uh, I think I, a quote I gave you, I spoke to an NBA coach who's now coaching in college who said, uh, uh, it's a, he's insane. Yeah, he's insane. Yeah, as a coach, yeah. college coaches, that's all. It's great. Yeah, you can't do that way in the NBA. Oh, I, not to say that he would. I, I have no doubt if Danny Hurley, uh, I was coaching the NBA, he would change. Right. He would have no choice but to change. Smart enough to know but, that um, I, I can't talk to these guys like that. <laughs> come on. So, but so, but I want to see if he apologizes. Sorry for making all you guys feel like you're stupid for suggesting I might get a new deal when I just got a new deal a month later. David, that's Come already on. out of the news cycle now. People already forgot about that shit. They're already on to what Bronny's yeah. going to do tomorrow for lunch or whatever right. the fuck. Like, it, that's just right. where we are. All right, Team USA, uh, really quick, uh, some news and notes. Um, Anthony Edwards, funny, funny Anthony Edwards. Uh, he was asked by Ben Golliver, I believe, about uh, who the number one option on Team USA is. And, you know, it's Ant. What, are you, what do you all think Ant said when he was asked that question? Right. Me. He's like, I'm the number one option. These guys got to, you know, I'm going to continue to be me. They got to fit in around me. All the stuff that we love Anthony Edwards for, right? That kind of bravado and, and that belief. And also, I will say this, David. Like, I mean, you have to be delusional in this league. If you want to, you have to think you're the best guy. Like, when you're that caliber of player, right? Because how are you going to make it otherwise, right? If you want to be... Mentioned as an all-time great and go down in the history books, which I know that's what Ant wants to do because he said that numerous times. Well, you've got to believe you're that good because if you don't, good luck. You ain't going to make it. Um, but anyway, and he had some other th comments later in when he talked to some other press, and he's like, oh, man, we got LeBron. We got KD. We got Steph. He's like, you put those three out there, put any of us two regular guys in there, right? And so he knows there's clearly a pecking order. I'm a regular guy when we speak about these people. But make no mistake, he wants to be, when he's done, where those people are with all their accomplishments. First of all, it's a terrible question because right. I don't even know what it means anymore. Right. Who cares? Uh, and also, who cares? Uh, when, you, when you argue Jason Tatum going into the finals was the number one guy, but right. Jalen Brown was MVP. Yeah, that, that, that shit doesn't matter. Defense like, dictates. It, it makes no sense to just keep attacking with your number one guy 
if the bad guys have three of their bad guys right. guarding your number Correct. one guy, <laughs> you're supposed to play the game. It's five on five. Correct. And um, so it's a stupid question. Uh, I hope that he is genuine with his responses of elsewhere about, you know, those guys are going to be doing a lot of playmaking. Uh, who's the leading Olympic American international scorer ever? Kevin Durant. Not Olympic but international. Kevin Durant, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he has the Olympic record, too. He does. Okay, he's, make team, no he's Team USA's number one scorer. <laughs> yeah, for a long time, mm-hmm. it was one and done. You were a college player. You played one Olympics, and then you were out of college. So it's not that long. I mean, 80, it went 92 was the first NBA team. And those guys only played one, pretty much. So, yeah, KD. And it was still pretty good. LeBron was all NBA this year, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, both Steph all NBA. Curry, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like, he's going to have a lot of gravity. I, I said on our show, on our call today, that the, it's a dream backcourt. Oh, you, yeah. you can't come up with a better combination for Curry than AE and, and AE for Curry because you want that slasher mm-hmm. that can create for Curry yep. with Curry's gravity. But Edwards can also really shoot. You can't just ignore him. Correct. I really love that combination, especially defensively too. And um, we're, we have some concerns about their age. I'll see him on the same Wednesday night in Vegas. Now you have concerns about their age. Uh, David, Guess who did not participate the first two days of Team USA? Yeah, practice? KD. Because he has a yeah. sore calf. I'm like, my yeah. guy, can you not fucking play the Olympics, please? Like, you yeah. have 17 gold medals. You don't need more. Like, it's all good. <laughs> I get it. He said to Vinny Goodwill. In his he interview, loves the hoop. He, he literally said to Vinny Goodwill, I don't care. I'm going to play until the wheels fall off. That's how much I love this yeah. game. I was like, oh, yeah. God. Kevin, why? Yeah. Why? But who well, might, who might no, have told him I, not I, to? I, right. I don't want him to not play. I just want him to be hurt. Yeah, that's my thing. I don't want you to be hurt. The point, the point should be the wheels don't have to come off. Correct. <laughs> yeah, let's just be smart about this. You can play. He's got to be inspired by LeBron. For sure. No doubt. Right. LeBron at 40 is all NBA. How old is KD? 36, 37. So, you know, he's in that range. Old, yeah, I mean, those guys are old as shit. God, all all of them. It, They're right? old as hell. <laughs> Amazing. Let's so he's got, to feel, he's got to feel like he's got three, four years left at least. Well, I, LeBron, I, I, I age him up too fast. He's 35. Steph's 36. 35. Okay. So still. He's got a good five, six, seven years, maybe. LeBron did say in his interview that, you know, maybe this is the last contract he signs. Like, I, I, don't, I don't think it's because he can't do it. Right. Probably doesn't I, want to. I've had, I've had, I've been around long, long enough to, to tell you, I've had a lot of my guys retire. They didn't all retire because they had to. Some did. Some did because the, no one would sign him anymore, even, though, even though, like Corey Brewer was one. I, I think there's no question he could help the team. He, but team, NBA teams didn't feel that way. Um, but he, and he's still reverse dunking in the big three and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> he did a game winning three the other day. But, um, uh, a lot of guys do it because it's just, I mean, why did, why did you stop doing stuff? Or why did I stop doing stuff that I used to do? It's just not as fun. Right. You have to, it's just hard. Yeah. You have to work so hard and they have other interests or parenting. Yep. Yeah. You know, I, they I want to like, be yeah. around their kid more. Yeah. Well, so it, it, it's, it's funny. I've had the advantage of speaking as you have to numerous athletes across multiple sports. And I'm always curious about what connects them all and what, what's the commonality. And like so much of it is, is just the preparation, right? They all, that's what they all speak about is that we all go through that. And most of them, when they retire, it's, they always say, not because I can't do this anymore. I don't want to do all the work I do to prepare to do the thing that I love to do so much, right? Which is play the game. Yeah. And as you get older, generally, it's more time preparing to get that body warmed up and ready to actually do the thing you love so much. And at some point, you're like, I, I, no, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm at an age now where th- there was a point in my life where uh, I liked that I had reached the level where I could go fly to watch, to work with players, stay in nice hotel rooms and the whole thing. I, I really like my wife and my home and uh, my routine. And so this is... Now, when I have to travel, which a lot this summer, it's just a pain in the ass. Mm-hmm. It's just a pain in the ass. Um, the end result is fine. You love when you get to go with, when you're in the gym with the player. That's the fun part. You love that. Oh, that's, yeah, the work, <laughs> the work part's fine. Yeah. It's everything else. Correct. Just being in my hotel room. Like, there's no hotel room to stay in better than where I live. It's at Correct. my house. You know, and just my routine. And I know everything. And, yeah. And so, but my kids are growing. A lot of these players, uh, LeBron's got young. LeBron's got young mm-hmm. kids. At home. Yeah, sure does. And uh, uh, Katie's different. Yeah, yeah. He really doesn't have anything else. Nothing but basketball. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, our sensibilities change. And uh, I do think, I, I don't want to get off this point. I think LeBron is inspirational for a lot of players. I'm using him as inspiration. I'm using Paul George as inspiration too. At 34, signing his big deal. Mm-hmm. I have players that are not that far from that point that I'm telling, like, this can be you. Like, you keep working. 
uh, uh, at some point they can't. Yeah. Either they can't do it, they won't do it, their body's not capable of it, and then they have the whole rest of their life to do the non-basketball playing stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah, why well, you can do it, and I, I think I think LeBron's shown them the way. Yeah, and I mean, you know, part of it's in jest because I don't want to see him get hurt, but it's really, look, you, you have a finite window to do this thing that you love, that you've worked your whole life to do. You do it as yeah. long as you are able, and, and that you yeah. can, and you're willing to work to do it, because when it's over, it's over, right? So... You know, when you're great at something, why would you want to stop doing the stuff you're great at? It's, it's, we all spend so much time trying to figure out what we're good at. When I, when I advise my son knows what he wants to do now, my daughter doesn't. And, um, I keep saying, you know, don't just follow your passion. It's got to match your talent. Mm -hmm. Find something you love doing and that you're good at it. When you finally find it, why would you want to stop? Like, I'm just getting started. I feel like I'm just now kind of figuring out some things, how to help players get better. And, and how to talk to all these guys who are so different. Um, I don't, I'm not ready. Yeah. I, have friends who are, I have friends who are retired already. I went to high school with. No. <laughs> and I, have, I have a brother who's half retired. Not you. younger than me. You no love chance. this too much. <laughs> no, I can't even. I would go stir crazy. It's yeah. going to be weird. I'm going on vacation soon. And it's going to be weird. Not second synergy. And I'm yep. always, I was breaking down clips as soon as we're done with our call this morning. Actually, before our call this morning, I broke down a couple clips. That's going to be weird not to have to do. And then I'll, I, I, I couldn't wait to get up this morning to do our show today. Do our content call today, really. Yeah. And uh, at some point, maybe that'll be gone, but not now. Yeah. And look, and that's you're just wired that way, right? I mean, same. Like, I, you can't be too much of doing nothing. I mean, no, I got I to gotta find stuff, right? That's just that's well, how we are. Plus, KD is just so good. Why would he not want to do it? <laughs> All right. right. When, when the wheels okay. fall off, he can't do what he's doing now. <laughs> that's a good time to quit when the wheels are falling off. Because until the wheels fall off, you can crush everybody. <laughs> right? That's fun. Right. That's very true. So David will be in Vegas this week. He'll get to check out Team USA and Team Canada. By the way, I'm excited to see Team Canada. Jamal Murray, SGA, Andrew Nemhart. What a backcourt, those three. Good Lord. Oh, and they've got um, Dylan Brooks. <laughs> a, a rejuvenated RJ Barrett from yeah. Toronto. Yes. Yeah, they've got uh, their big guys, they sh- Kelly yeah, Olenek, Trey Lyles. I have to see where everything is, but like, Kemberch. they they should be in, they, I mean, meddling should be a thing. They should they finished third in the world. Yes. They beat, they beat America. Correct. Now, their big guys were right me. Now. Their big guys were me a little bit, but no, they, they're loaded. Yeah. 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 I'm excited to see Victor too on, and France and what, what, uh, what he does. Is Kula Bali on that team? I got to check. I don't know. He's pretty young. He is know. young. Yeah. I got to see who's on there. Rudy's there, there for sure. All right, guys. Uh, we will see you later in the week. Take care.